welcome to Kanaka Bar. We're located 14 kilometers south of Lytton on Highway 1. This is a region where there's no mining, forestry, tourism, agriculture, or oil and gas development. So we're working on becoming self-sufficient with the goal of generating our own energy, food, and becoming financially independent. So as a result, the community has developed its four self-sufficiency goals to prepare ourselves for the environment and the economies of tomorrow. In terms of the renovations, each home has been assessed and we're now implementing retrofits, which will see the energy consumption of each home reduced. In the, the series, we're going to be introducing blower door testing, window replacement, draft proofing, and insulation. Thanks for joining me and good luck with your retrofits. Today we're here to do a blower door test on this house. Uh, this house has been newly purchased by the band and it's in need of some repairs. But before we take that step, we're gonna do a test to see how leaky it actually is. Let's go inside. I'm here today with Matthew. Um, he works for Kanaka Bar in the housing and maintenance department. Um, and he's gonna be learning how to do the blower door test with me. basically trying to get the measurement from this side of the house to that side of the house using the laser. 27.5. Cool. We've taken some basic measurements of the house, including the length and the width, and we're going to use this to calculate the volume of the house. And the volume of the house is important to the blower door because um, it's one of the parameters that we enter in to find out air changes. And basically what it's saying is all the volume in your house, how many times in an hour does that air get evacuated out of the house to the outdoors? Um, and a typical new house is, takes, it's about 1.5, whereas a lot of the homes that we see um, after 20 years of service, they're more like seven to 13 air changes. So that can get quite expensive in terms of heating costs. So it looks like this house is uh, 17,000 square feet. So now we're just gonna use that to find out the volume. So we multiply that by eight. Uh, and it looks like this house is 13,600 cubic feet. Right on. Now we can set up the door. It helps being tall for this. It's going to be a little tighter. So we fit the adjustable frame to the door, and now we're going to put the parachute piece onto it. I have to tighten it so it sits on the frame and no air can come through. We kind of just look around and make sure that there isn't any gaps that we can see light coming through. Sometimes if you have a door that is a little bit skewed or has moved around because of the house settling, then it might be a little bit harder to adjust that door, but this one has been pretty easy. So the tube is used to measure pressure. We want to be able to measure outside of the house and inside of the house. So this big long red tube is going to be going on the outside. And the reason that it's so long is so that we can get some clearance away from the fan, which will affect um, the pressure on the tip here. So we're going to weave it through the door and it's going to sit five feet away um, in a nice sheltered area. We want to make sure that this isn't um, too affected by wind or sun or droplets of uh, water. So I'm just going to go outside and put that tube in a nice safe place. So now we're going to mount the fan on the door frame and the fan is going to be used to depressurize the house. It's important to mount the fan with the rings showing towards the house. Like I was showing earlier, the red hose that goes to the outside measures the outside pressure and the yellow one measures the pressure on the inside of the house, so it's much shorter. And then there's a Cat5 cable that connects the fan to the manometer so that they can communicate to each other. And the manometer will sense the pressure and adjust the airflow using the fan automatically. So we're connecting the yellow hose to the yellow inlet and the red hose to the red inlet. And then you have to find the baseline 
So yeah, when we get the baseline, we just want to make sure that it's under two Pascal. Anything above that, it's a little too windy and we want to adjust it. Um, let's see what it is here. So it's 0.16, so that's really good. So we're going to record that. So next we're going to put in the um, volume. Okay, and now we're ready to start the test. So you can set the pressure to 50. And the reason we set it to 50 is it's the standard for the blower door test. And it basically means that the house is going to be depressurized to 50 pascals. And that sort of simulates a pretty windy day and gives us um, an opportunity to look for air leaks. So basically just wait until it stabilizes. So now we can start pulling the numbers. So that's one of the ones, so 1295. So 140. 146. 146. And then air changes is the last one. 5.8. Perfect. Okay, so um, here are the blower door test results that we recorded from the manometer. So it's an air change of 5.8, so that's getting up there. Um, so it means basically every hour, all the air in this house changes over with the outside 5.8 times. And then the really interesting one is the equivalent leakage area. So if you took all the leaks in the house and combined them into one, it would give you the size of the hole that that represents. So if you can imagine that, that's like a box that's 10 by 10 sized hole. So it's a lot of air coming into this house. So as we're running the blower door, it's, it's a great opportunity to look for air leaks because we can actually feel them. So now we can just go and look for like the leaks. Some of the most common places to look are um, around windows, um, especially if they're broken, they'll be really leaky, um, around doors. The attic hatch is a big place for air leakage. Um, box and joists, which is like in the basement where the joists meet the exterior walls. Any sort of fans that you have will be leaky. One of my favorite spots is any sort of furnaces or equipment. If they have to like, evacuate air to the exterior, then they're usually will be leaky. And then um, outlets um, have quite a bit of leakage. Try it over here, it's crazy. Yeah. It's really bad right yeah. there. Feels like a fan. So today we've learned how to set up the blower door, how to prepare a house for a blower door test. We've also learned about the measurements that we take using the blower door. And we've gone around the house and used the blower door to help us identify where the leaks are coming from. This gives us a great inventory um, to take action and actually seal up those leaks. Um, and we can also use the blower door to secure funding for these projects with um, the utilities, which is another great feature.